Man, oh man. I know everyone's been looking forward to this, not supposedly seeing me, but it's the end. So um, I'm going to try to make this a, a, as quick as possible. And um, I don't know, I guess, are my slides going to show eventually? I sure hope so. Shout out to the AV people because they're the best. All right. Um, are the slides supposed to show? I don't know. I hope so, because I'm not going to be able to act this out the whole time. Oh, there we go. So, um, quickly, uh, I mean, I realized that I, I saw a speaker yesterday, and she kind of like matched her slides with her outfit, so I thought I might do the same. And so, if everything goes right, I'm going to disappear, and I'm going to reappear again. It's like camouflage. Okay, it worked. Anyhow, I thought that was kind of funny. Um, and you're going to find out I'm a bit of a comedian, so uh, we're going to start this with a, uh, with a joke. Is, is that cool? Can we have a joke? All right. Uh, how many JavaScripters here? I mean, it's kind of funny that I don't see all the hands up, but that's cool. Um, so imagine if Naughty by Nature went to the TC39 meeting. Hip hop array. Oh, hey, oh, oh, you didn't like that. It's all good. Anyhow, uh, we're going to get things cracking. Yes, my name is Henri. Uh, my real last name is not Helvetica. I just thought it sounded kind of cool, so I did it anyways. Um, a lot of people might recognize me from uh, my face, which is the avatar that I kind of like to. Um, I'm from the greatest city on the planet called Toronto. Um, it's super multicultural, and I didn't realize it till I left, and I was like, man, Toronto is actually amazing. So if you're ever in the area, come by and check us out. We, we like to have some good times. And here's a little something you may not have known about Toronto. Um, how many old schoolers here? Anyone own a Commodore 64 back in the day? Yeah? Well, Commodore was founded in Toronto. Yeah, no doubt. Um, Anyhow, so we're going to get things going. Um, welcome to The Shape of the Web. Uh, it's a talk that I thought about uh, a while back, and, and sort of just to talk about like, where the web has gone, uh, a lot of good things have happened. Um, a lot of technology was used to make things really sort of like friendly and user, like the great user experiences that we, we try to create, uh, but also felt that you know, the technologists that were involved were amazing, but also, there are some technologists who may have been left behind, so we're going to kind of have a conversation about that. And it's really just a conversation, so let's get cracking. Now, first off, I want to thank JSConf EU for having me. Um, I had been watching this conference from a distance, like on Twitter, and I would look at the photos like, wow, this is amazing. Look at this screen. No, seriously, look at this screen. Um, I mean, I own a, a, an ultra-wide at home. And I think that this ratio is like 15 to 2, which is bananas. Like, talk about neck pains. Um, but DevTools would be amazing on the screen, by the way. Um, Festival X, 10 years. And I come from music, so I could appreciate what they've done here. Uh, the setup, uh, I mean, it's absolutely elaborate. But I love that they've done this for a tech conference. So can we please give JSConf a round of applause as well? All right, that's enough. I'm going to get jealous. Um, so they've been around 10 years. And I was thinking to myself, like, you know, I was kind of, you know, writing this talk up, adding some notes, 10 years. Where was I 10 years ago? Well, like I said, I came from music, and I, I was able to pull this, this photo out. Um, I used to do lectures with the Red Bull Music Academy, which is actually based out of Germany. And uh, I was doing a lecture here with, with Flying Lotus, and that's, that was like a, a big deal for me at the time. But that's actually 10 years from about like a week from today. So it's pretty on point and on brand. But the web, the web is actually 30 years, 30 years old. And um, I was thinking to myself like, man, 30 years old, that's, that's, that's kind of like a long time. And I don't know where you were 30 years ago, but I remember when I first accessed the web, um, the first thing I thought of was, was this. And I don't know how many of you were able to sort of like be around this time where you had to get a, a modem and you made all that 
telephone sounds and all that stuff just to, to get on the internet. Uh, but it was great because I discovered a lot of things. And there's one place I used to hang out, which was, uh, who remembers like news groups here? Okay, there we go. This is where I hung out a lot. Uh, rec.music.hiphop, and I was like, yeah, man, I'm going to talk about hip-hop with all these people I don't know. Uh, but this was actually the first time you started to connect with people from all parts of the world who had access to the net. And another thing that I did, as I had more and more access, I used to use search engines like everyone else, and who remembers Alta Vista? Okay, there we go. I was a big fan of Alta Vista, man. When that, when that vanished, I was so sad. But um, what I also did was I started to surf the web, and I was a big Netscape nav navigator and communicator fan. Um, and actually, um, being, I mean, there was a few browsers around thereafter, but this is the one that I was using. And the big part about this one is when it was released, um, this is what, this is one of the early quotes from Andreessen himself, this software is going to change everything. And it kind of did. Uh, and why was it so popular? Well. Well, let me get into another quote, actually, before that. Here's another fantastic quote that came out from another influential person in tech at the time. Things started exploding with the invention of the browser because suddenly the internet was accessible to the average person. And, I mean, average, we'll say sort of like middle class person who had a computer, who had a modem. Um, but it definitely opened things up. And you start to sort of like have that delight in discovery that I like to talk about. Now, um, when um, Netscape came out, it was extremely popular, 65 million users in 18 months. Um, and part of the reason was the fact that as much as the early web was like text, it was very academic, but um, they were actually able to bring images into the fold here. And what then happened is that when we were surfing the net, we were very accustomed to the layout, text, images. It was like reading the paper. And Believe it or not, there was debate as to whether or not they were going to bring images uh, onto the web. Um, you know, some mild arguments, and uh, the belief was that if they brought images on, it, there would be like this onslaught of pornography. And I'm here to say that they were absolutely wrong. Right? Um, but the fact is, for real though, um, they believe that by opening it up, adding some images, and letting people sort of experiment, it was going to drive the web forward, and it actually did. Now today, we have 4.3 billion users online. And I think that's phenomenal, but believe it or not, there's still room to grow. Um, and you, know, you might wonder, like, okay, that's an explosive growth. What sort of drove that? Um, well, this is kind of it right here. Uh, this young lady's on a mobile phone. Um, I believe this is nothing that they expected to see at the time. This is like mid-90s. Who thought that you were going to have a mobile device and be able to surf the web just as powerfully as they did back then? So, um, this has allowed us to do a lot of different things. Um, we've been uh, able to be very productive in life. Um, so, what have we been able to do with sort of like little friction? Um, pretty much everything. Uh, I mean, we can make money, we manage money online, um, we can go on a date, we can go buy clothes for the day, we can actually go rent a car to take your date out, we can order fish, we can listen to one of my favorite songs called Fish, and we could actually get phishing emails from African princes. Right? But all jokes aside, um, man, we can actually read comics and make them accessible, comic books. Shout outs to uh, Jessica. Um, no doubt. For all the people that we're trying to bring online, we could actually go offline. This is what technology has allowed us to do, um, which is absolutely needed. By the way, I downloaded the offline map for Berlin because I was not going to pay those fees. Um, but we could actually create music in the browser as well. Shout outs Live.js, all right, in the building. This is the kind of technology, this is what the technology has allowed us to do. Very important. Now, um, and this is the shape of the web as we see it growing, growing right before our eyes. 
So the technology has been extremely important in getting these sort of uh, these things done. And this is where we are going to sort of like uh, see even more technology um, allow us to do greater things thereafter. Now, what about the technologists? Um, we may have been playing some amazing chords on some of the devices that we've seen out there, you know, from keyboards to like MIDI controllers. Uh, but unfortunately, there's been a little bit of discord as well. And we're gonna get into a few sort of like items that have sort of been bothering me a little. So let's talk about women technology. Um, I mean, there is an ongoing refrain. We know exactly what's going on. And it actually kind of saddens me. Um, I mean, you just need to open up Twitter and wait about like five seconds before it hits you. And I think that's sad. It's been long discussed, you know, um, what needs to be done to retain talent, to, to attract talent. And we still go out and sort of like trip over some of the main issues. I mean, what do they talk about? What do women talk about when they sort of leave the industry? You know, the lack of career growth, salary, poor management. And, you know, when I read poor management, I know exactly what they mean. That's just being polite. Whoops. And the other part is actually what scares me. Because the other, I feel I know exactly what's going on. But, again, it's being polite and not really calling people out. Because other, to me, means exactly this. Um, you know, it's not fit for print, but we know exactly what's happening. And to me, that's absolutely not the way or the shape of the web needs to take further on. So, um, I'm going to share a little story, something that I sort of like did uh, a few years ago. Now, International Women's Day happens once a year, March 8th. Um, and I got together with some buddies. I'm like, man, let's, let's rap about this. And I want to put an event together for women to come out and enjoy themselves and speak to other women and listen to other women in the industry. And this goes back to something I tried about 10 years ago in music. I really wanted to do a show with um, female producers. I work in a certain type of sounds and you know, I knew there were producers out there, but when I went knocking on some doors, um, I couldn't find any sponsors, X, Y, and Z, so it got a little tough, but I never forgot that. So when I had an opportunity to do something again, I did. So, um, every year, some buddies of mine put together this event called IWDTO, International Women's Day. And uh, this is a picture of, of 2017, because we've been doing it for five years now. And on, from the right to left, we have Lisa Galopter. She actually worked at uh, the White House. She was an Obama hire, by the way. Um, the lady in the middle, someone who I look up to very much, she works in performance. Uh, she goes by the name of Tammy Everts. She works at uh, Speed Curve, an amazing person. You need to follow her if you can. And of course, on the left, I'm not sure if she's here, but Mina Markham. I was super happy to have her come down, no doubt, and to have her share her story, because I thought that was important. But the most important part is the fact that, like I said, we do this every year, and it warms my heart to be able to sort of help out in a way. I might not be the best ally, but I feel like I'm doing a little something to, to make things work. Why do I want to do this? Well, I want to make sure that we have moments like these. You know, we know Katie Boop. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Katie Booman, we know exactly what happened there. A great moment, even though shortly after we saw the trolls come out and sort of question her. Uh, Margaret Hamilton, as we know, um, coined the uh, term software engineering, but right there she's sitting next to a stack of paper that was essentially uh, her sort of like tracing or helping uh, get the, um, the rockets out to the moon. But one of my favorite photos is this one right here. Um, this is the Indian Space Research Organization. And they're having a ball right there. Why? Well, um, they were the fourth uh, team to ever get a satellite around uh, Mars. But they were the first to do it on the first try. Not NASA, not the European Space Agency, and not the Russian Space Agency, but the agency out of India. And as you can tell, the team is made up of several women. There's actually a short documentary on that. A documentary on that. I'll be more than happy to put the link out. So I want to see more of these happening, these moments taking place. 
Um, and the big thing is that uh, the common thread between the three photos that I showed, um, I mean, they all had CS backgrounds, degrees and whatnot, which brings me to my, my next malaise, the CS versus non-CS beef. Any CS people in the building? I mean, raise your hand, I got love for you. You know what I mean? Um, how did this happen? I really don't know. But I kind of got triggered by this one tweet, and this person's going to go unidentified. Reasons why a computer science degree is a bad idea. What? Money, time, CS can be so boring, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought to myself, that was actually kind of irresponsible because it came from someone who has a large platform, and I actually questioned him on it. But I'm not going to get into that. But I will get into this. And make some noise when you see a photo that sort of like you recognize the image. OK. All right. Does anyone know what this is? OK, I'm going to get into that. But does anyone know what this is? OK. So let me go back. DOPE stands for Dartmouth Oversimplified Programming Experiment. It was the language that preceded BASIC. And we know that BASIC is beginner's all-purpose symbolic instruction code. Why is this important? The, the, the author of BASIC, John Kennedy, a math wizard, worked at uh, Dartmouth, believed that he could get non-STEM students at the university to get into programming. And he basically soldiered on trying to make things work. And eventually, BASIC did become a language. And how did it happen? Because he got a lot of non-STEM students to work along and contribute to, the, to the, um, the venture. And BASIC was born. And that's very important because um, even as a non-STEM student, you're in BASIC. This is a tweet from Brian Loves Words. Where is he, Brian? You're in the building? I, boom. I thought this was so true. Um, you needed to sort of like see this because you don't need a CS degree to be successful. But it doesn't mean by having a CS degree, you're not going to be. And in fact, John Kennedy's daughter mentioned this. Uh, BASIC was basically an incredible project of an and what is now called an aligned team. So I thought that was wild. Um, but speaking of CS, I want to talk about something else real quick. Does anyone who know who this is? Probably not. Um, her name's Lena Sod Soderberg, but most of the CS people, and if anyone's in uh, performance, they might know this name, Lena or Lena. Okay, we know, someone here knows. But you might recognize her when I do this. Now, this is the photo that's been internationally accepted as the test image when you do any kind of image processing, compressing, et cetera, et cetera, which is totally cool. But here's what's not so cool. This is where it came from. I remember doing some research one day, and I could not believe it. We have been using an image from Playboy for 40-some years. Do you know that 2 million images are uploaded to the web daily? Oh, did I say 2 million? I meant 2 billion images are uploaded to the web daily, but somehow we have the photo of a centerfold as the test pattern, I mean the test image for image compression. You know, and for a second I was thinking, ah, you know, it's the 40s, you know, we're going to get over it, whatever, it's, it, it's going to sort of fade. This happened in 2018. Someone presented a talk and just like talked about centerfolds. 2018, how are you supposed to retain talent? How are you supposed to attract talent when you have this kind of comportment out in the wild? This is not the shape of the web to come. And with that being said, I mean, I tweeted this out just moments before I got on stage. Um, I'll, I'll ask anyone who wishes to do so to vote whether or not the Lena image should remain the standard in image processing. Now, we kind of know what this means, the World Wide Web. Um, developer I know likes to call it the wealthy Western web. OK, I'm good, because I think this started early. Sorry, I'm watching the clock and this flashing. Anyhow, the wealthy Western web. 
because we know that you know we like to design and create apps for like you know the West. But what if I told you this is the list of the top 10 internet users by country? Okay. What if I told you the greatest growth by country looks like this? Now, these two lists are the reason why documentation is important and is important to translate. Think about this. Remember that gentleman spoke yesterday who said, um, you know, he has spoken a few times on stage, but it was his first time speaking in English. First time. And you have developers out there that are trying to, you know, get in the fold, but documentation is not in their native language. That's something we definitely have to look into. Why? Because you have situations like this. And um, this sort of caused a little bit of kerfuffle on, uh, on, on Twitter, and I was watching it. And this tweet came out. I'm not going to name the person because I didn't ask whether or not, you know, uh, I could use it, but... And this happened thereafter. Same tweet. Now, we are talking about, you know, creating an inclusive community, an inclusive web. I mean, I don't know how you're going to get more inclusive than having documentation translated properly so that other developers can have some input. Think about your framework that may sort of like mature so much faster because you have con contributions from all over the globe because they have documentation in their native tongue. I think it's very important to remember. That being said, I mean, what's next in 2020? I don't know. I think we're all still going to be developers. We're all still going to love the web. We're all still going to go to conferences. We're all still going to network, kick it with folks. We're all still going to have great discoveries. I mean, there's so much web we have yet to discover. Um, there's so many more people that we can help delight in discovery. Um, I mean, there's so many more applications we have yet to sort of engineer. Um, people, neighbors, uh, so many people we can learn from, experiences, you know, um, just so that we can make tweaks to our applications. Uh, but at the end of the day, I know we're good people by default. I mean, I, I truly believe that. I don't think that we're born with like, sort of like evil within us. At least I sure hope not. Um, my hope is that we keep it as such. I mean, we get to maybe one day enjoy another conf EU, JS conf EU, because I'd love to come back. Um, and with that being said, thank you very much for your time. Come visit me in Toronto and let's party tonight. Thank you.